Here we're going to cover 3D surface engraving or surface etching. What we're going to do is we're going to take this 2D simple, just NURBS curves, it's just a simple 2D logo, and we're going to etch this logo into the 3D surface of this mug here. This is just a very simple example object. Now you can use this on way more complicated objects, it's not limited to something so simple, but I wanted to show that this is not an even object, it's not flat. So for instance, if you wanted to etch a perfectly flat brick, you just wanted to etch words into it, you could simply extrude your text, move it into the brick, and then subtract it, and you'd be done. You wouldn't have to do anything else because the engraving would be the same distance all the way across the surface of the object. If you tried to use that same trick on this object, you'd get a really deep cut in the middle and then really shallow cuts off to the side. Then it wouldn't look right. This is showing you how to use, we're going to use the project tool in order to get a nice even engraving across the surface, a curved surface, or a surface that's curved in any number of different angles. So first we have to line it up properly because the project tool is dependent on the view that you're using. So it, if, we're, if we were to project and we had the curve on the left, it would project all the way to the right. We want to make sure it's in front of the object. So first we'll group all these so we can move them all as one object. These used to be polygons, by the way. I just drew two simple circles and two simple polygons and converted them to NURBS curves. That's all. There's nothing special to these. Go to a top plan view. Put this grouped. Grab that in the middle. Line it up. Go back to front view. And I don't like this alignment quite right, so I'm going to select both of these. And we use Align Distribute, Align Center. And then align distribute and align middle. There we are. That's nice and neat. However, I also want to be make sure I'm still a little bit away. There we are. You don't want this to start inside this object. You want to make sure it's nice and far away. You've got some room to play here. You don't want to make it right against the object to start with. The trick we're going to use is going to get the curves that go right against this face from the projection of this object. So now we'll go back into front view. And first I'll show a very simple example. We'll just project, and we want to use this mode here, the add mode, because we need a solid after this. We don't just want to project the curve onto the object. If we use this mode, we would project the curve and then it would be trimmed. If we use this mode, it would actually split the solid on the other side and cut a hole all the way through, and then our mug wouldn't hold water, so that's no good. So we'll use this third mode because we want to get solids. We're first going to click on the curve, but you notice we can't select anything here. That's because the, our objects are still grouped. Make sure you ungroup it after you move it there, because we want these four individual curves. You can't grab them inside a group with the project tool. Then we'll go back to the project tool, be in the third mode, and you'll see these will highlight. So what we'll do first is we'll just do the exterior curve. First select that, then select the solid that you want to project it to. It looks like nothing happened. However, you do see these lines here. That's because we now have a 3D projection of that curve that matches this face exactly. You can see it a little easy in OpenGL, and you can also see it here. Now these will look a little strange because this has a completely flat face, and since we want this ring to just be that thick, we don't want this face, this area to be etched, I'm going to show you how to remove that as well. But for now, we'll just go back to the front view, we'll go back to wireframe, and we'll just do the same project operation on the remaining three curves here. It doesn't matter what order you do it in. Select this curve, select that solid, select this curve, select that solid, select this curve, and then the same solid. So now, however, if I go into a 3D view, it looks fine here, but if we render an OpenGL, there's a mess here. That's because we've made uh, the inner ring and the outer ring are what's called Z fighting. They have the same face in the same place, so the rendering engine doesn't know what to do. It's just trying to draw edges across them. It's not sure. You, you would never have an object like this in real life. It would just be a solid flat face. So we're going to select the inner ring and the outer ring, and we're just going to subtract solids. We're going to keep the outer ring. There. That gives us a nice clean solid ring and a nice clean V with no surface fighting or anything like that. However, if we just took this now and subtracted it from the, ob from the cup object, nothing would happen because it's just touching it. It's not inside the object. It just runs right up to the face. It doesn't actually go inside the object. So we go into top plan view again. And now we can just select all the surface geometry here. It should just be three solids now if you're following along. And we want to etch this in. So if we knew exactly how far we wanted to etch it, we could click this and then hit tab, type in exactly how long we want to edit it, hit tab again, and then click. So this will etch it exactly two millimeters in. 
Now we'll select, we'll add the cut to the selection, and we'll use, oops, click on the edge, and then subtract solids. We want to keep the large cup object and use these as the subtracting objects. Click OK. There we are. Now if we come down and render an OpenGL, we have a nice deep etching into the face of the object that follows the curve, and that's the key. See how it follows it? You can look along the edge there. It follows exactly along the surface, and that's what we're looking for. That's exactly what we wanted. However, uh, this isn't destructive. So if I wanted to go back and I wasn't quite done with my cup yet, this is now a solid subtraction. So I can double click on this, wait just a moment, and then you'll get your objects back again. So if I wanted to, I could get rid of this ring, just have the V. There we are, we just have the V etching. However, I want to undo that because I do want that ring there. Now, if we also decide that it was a little too deep, we didn't want it to look quite that deep, we can also move back out, select everything, and just move it back down just a bit. Exit the solid subtraction again, and you can see it's a little more shallow now. That's how you can control the depth of the etching into it. And of course, same as it was before, if I double click again, the original cup object is still fine. It's a fillet, and that's the last step that I did in my 3D modeling. I was filleting the top edge of this cup here to make it smooth. It's still completely editable. I can still change these values and they'll still function. There we are. That covers the basics of surface etching on a complex 3D surface.